Welcome to another edition of Family Matters, the show where we talk about topics of interest for families with young children or anybody working with young children. I'm Chloe Leary, your host and the Executive Director of the Winston Prouty Center. And I'm very pleased today to have Janice Stockman on our show. Welcome, Janice, and thank, thank you for you. coming. Thanks for having um, me. This seemed like a perfect time to ask you to do this because last episode, we talked with Anna Williams, who's a preschool teacher, mm -hmm. and so um, just sort of about what preschoolers are doing. And uh, sort of thinking about developmentally what's happening, thought about, well, not everybody's developing typically. Mm -hmm. And so what do we do when our preschoolers aren't necessarily looking like other preschoolers? So I thought, oh, Janice can talk to us about that. So um, why, don't you, why don't we start with you saying your job and why I might have invited you for this topic in particular. Okay. So um, I work for Wyndham Southeast Supervisory Union. That's our local school district. Uh, covering the towns of Brattleboro, Putney, Guilford, Dummerston, and Vernon. And um, I am the early childhood coordinator, and part of my job is to oversee our Triple E program, which stands for Essential Early Education. And um, it is the service of our school district for um, children who have delays or disabilities and who... Um, whose caregiver, parent, preschool teacher mm -hmm. is concerned that they're not developing typically mm -hmm. and might want to look into um, that a little more closely. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, uh, we've actually recently talked about the fact that Triple E, a lot of people might know what that means in terms of the concept, but it doesn't necessarily describe the service. So there's a movement afoot to describe it as early childhood special education. So. I think that's a little more descriptive it than is, people right, understand. Right. Um, because I think people know what special education is. Mm -hmm. So it sort of helps that. Um, so it's specifically for the three to five year old set. So before mm -hmm. they actually get into school. Right. So that's you and your team. Mm -hmm. So I think you've had um, people from early intervention on your show, right. which is um, children who are birth to age three. Mm -hmm. And when they turn three, they leave the early intervention system and if they still have a delay or a disability, mm -hmm. enter Triple um, E, which is our school-based early childhood special education. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not necessarily, the services you provide aren't necessarily school-based. So why don't you talk a little bit about what, what can happen in Triple E mm -hmm. um, and where those things happen. Okay. So um, maybe I'll just start from, like, the first phone call. Great. Um, usually um, we get a call or a referral from either a pediatrician, a preschool teacher, a parent, or some other adult who knows a child that they have questions about their mm -hmm. development. And um, we might do a developmental screening um, which could help us learn a little bit more about the child mm -hmm. and what the nature of their con the concern is and observe them in their setting, which may be in a preschool, which most likely is in a preschool or a child care setting. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the child isn't in preschool or child care, and um, in which case we'll talk to the family and go out to the home. Mm -hmm. um, a screening is a very um, kind of a quick look at whether a child is developing typically or not. It's not diagnostic and we wouldn't make any judgments about mm -hmm. um, a child or labels about a child based on a screening. But if a child um, indicates, if it in the screening indicates that there may be some areas of concern, we'll um, do an evaluation. Mm -hmm. And once we get to that point, um, we use, we have um, special education procedures that we need to follow mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we're um, 
uh, program of the schools, mm -hmm. and we have federal guidelines and um, regulations, both federal and state, to mm -hmm. follow. So uh, families are involved in helping us um, make a plan for how we how we are going to evaluate the child. Mm -hmm. It starts with a meeting. There will be several different kinds of meetings um, throughout the process, and um, we'll determine together what kind of um, assessments or evaluations make sense for that particular child and, and the particular mm -hmm. concerns they have. So we do these services in a variety of different places. Um, evaluations could happen in our office, which is on 98 SD Street. Um, often they happen in the preschool or child care mm -hmm. program. And I would say some happen in homes, but that's um, not so often. Mm -hmm. And when you, you made a good point that uh, sort of the um, at the federal level, we have programs for special education and um, or for kids who aren't typically developing. So zero to three, birth to three is early intervention. Then there's three to five, and then sort of which is part of the school, and then actually in school. Does that change from your perspective? Is there a a different focus from zero to three, three to five? and then kindergarten up. And mm -hmm. so what could a family sort of expect from, um, from that different lens? Um, well, I think in early intervention, kids are so young at that point. It's, mm -hmm. um, we see kids in the context of their family. And so um, in early intervention, a child's needs is inextricably tied in with their family needs. And, um, plans to help kids make progress um, may also include goals for the family. When children turn three and they enter our program, which is part of our school system, the focus shifts slightly to, um, to the educational needs of the child. Mm -hmm. So we want to see is how is this child learning and what kinds of services can help them make progress mm -hmm. towards um, learning and being ready for school when mm -hmm. school starts. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say in Triple E, we focus more on um, the educational needs of the child mm -hmm. and to support the family in understanding how to meet those needs mm -hmm. at home and then what kinds of community supports such as preschool or other kinds of activities in the mm -hmm. community can meet those needs mm -hmm. as well. And I think that maybe segues nicely to eligibility um, in terms of, because I think it can be easy to be confused about that. Like our, in early intervention, there are some uh, things that make you automatically eligible. Um, but, and as the, so I assume the same is true, so we could talk a little bit about that. And then as the funnel goes more towards focusing specifically on educational needs, you know, does that, sort of um, change the eligibility. So why don't we talk a little bit about after you do the evaluation, what tells you that somebody, mm -hmm. that a child will get services? So um, we are, we have guidelines that we need to follow too around eligibility and criteria that the state sets mm -hmm. and um, certain children. So we look at, um, we call them two gates. So if you're a family, who has been through this process, these are words that are, uh, should be familiar to mm -hmm. you. Um, we look at the first gate is the question, does the child have a disability? So remember this is special education and um, we want to be providing special ed services to kids who qualify for those services, um, but not to have kids in the special ed system if they don't really need special education. Mm -hmm. They may need other kinds of support. Mm -hmm. so, if, um, so we answer the question, does the child have a disability? And in my world, that means one of two things. There are certain medical diagnoses mm -hmm. that um, will indicate a child has a disability. And then there are some... Um, significant developmental delays mm. that we learn about through evaluation and testing. Um, so children need to show 
um, a 40% delay in one area of development or 25% delay in two or more areas of development. Okay. Um, and the percentages correspond to the age of the child. So mm -hmm. we'd be looking for uh, a difference in um, their developmental age mm -hmm. versus their chronological age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some of the areas of development that we look at mm -hmm. are um, adaptive, which is also we think of as self-help mm -hmm. skills, so things like feeding, dressing, mm -hmm. um, also um, things like um, personal responsibility. Um, we also look at personal social or or social emotional mm. um, development, cognitive development, communication, mm -hmm. which is um, both receptive language, things that, you know, how well a child can mm -hmm. listen and understand, as well as speaking, mm -hmm. um, and um, motor development. Mm -hmm. Those are the big areas. So those are the big areas. Um, what, what's the personal responsibility? How is that oh, different from self-help? <laughs> like, um, things like, um, oh, does, a, uh, does the child, um, uh, one, one, one question would be, do they put away their toys after playing? Okay. You know, so it's, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a funny term when you think about a three-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Are they being responsible for their toys? Like, right. Yeah, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Are there, um, when you think about uh, sort of the population in our area, are there things that rise to the top or areas where you find uh, delays are more prevalent, for instance, or, you know, are there a bunch of, uh, yeah, is that, what are you seeing in terms of where we are right now? I think the, um, the, we see a lot of um, communication delays. Mm -hmm. So um, kids who benefit from some speech and language therapy, either for um, articulation Concerns and those are, you know, just um, the way a child forms words and mm -hmm. the s um, speech sounds that they make, mm -hmm. um, or um, their their ability to use language mm -hmm. to communicate mm -hmm. or to be able to understand what other people are saying and follow it, you know, to be able to follow directions. Um, so speech and language and communication are mm -hmm. pretty high. Um, and then the area of cognitive development, um, cognitive skills, mm -hmm. those are also um, where we see a lot of areas of concern. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the medical, I have two questions, what are some of the medical diagnoses and, do, and that auto, and then does that, even if that medical diagnosis, is the presumption that that medical diagnosis means that it will impact education? So what's an example? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked that because I think I, I said the first gate, which is does the child have a disability? The uh -huh. second gate is does the child require specialized instruction okay. to ensure their future success in school mm -hmm. and home and community? So... Um, Remember, the disability question talks about the diagnosis okay. or significant delays as mm -hmm. evidenced by test scores. The second gate is, so given that mm -hmm. a child might have a disability, do they require special education or specialized instruction in order to make progress? And yeah, how do you determine that? Like, how does that? It's interesting because the team uh -huh. determines that mm -hmm. together. Um, and the team consists of the child's family members, um, the special educators, mm -hmm. uh, preschool teachers. Um, it might include a medical social worker or a nutritionist mm -hmm. or speech and language therapist. Um, but it's a very um, really fascinating and mm. interesting process when a team comes together mm -hmm. to look at the results of evaluation, mm -hmm. evaluating a mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. um, but some of those medical diagnoses are things like um, autism, mm -hmm. Down syndrome, mm -hmm. um, deafness, mm -hmm. 
blindness, um, things we ADHD, know, are things we know to interfere. Yes, with yeah, that. Mm -hmm. yeah, great. Things that have a high likelihood of interfering. Okay. Uh, we are going to take a very short break and hear a message from Let's Grow Kids, and then we'll be back and talk some more about this. Okay. For the youngest among us, playtime is more than just fun. It's learning and development. When we stimulate a child's curiosity and natural desire to connect with others, we help them develop the important skills needed for school, relationships, and life. Join Let's Grow Kids to help all of our children reach their full potential. Learning starts day one. Okay, we're back. Uh, we are talking with Janice Stockman about um, special education and Triple E is essential early education or early childhood special education. We've just been talking about um, how to know you're eligible, how your child might be eligible, and then how that gets determined. And we were talking specifically about how a team, there's sort of an evaluation and a process that you might hit a bar, but then there's really this discussion of a team of people who know the child and can talk about is, um, is this disability going to interfere with mm -hmm. uh, being successful in right. school, specifically focused on education. So, mm -hmm. um, so are there instances, we, we were saying there's some medical diagnoses that we're pretty sure autism, mm -hmm. blindness, Down syndrome are going to interfere. Right. Are there some sort of auto-eligible medical diagnoses that don't necessarily lead to that or you know are there areas where um, of surprise sometimes or where it doesn't necessarily interfere um, yeah so sometimes a child might have um, a diagnosis of something for instance ADHD mm -hmm. I'll just use that as an example um, knowing that it doesn't always work this way uh -huh. but um, Children might have a diagnosis of something, but their learning really isn't impaired by it. Mm -hmm. Or there are accommodations that are made fairly easily that mm -hmm. don't require specialized mm -hmm. instruction in the classroom mm -hmm. to help them be successful. Mm -hmm. So if a child doesn't need specialized instruction, mm -hmm. it's best to support the teacher and um, or have the teacher use their best teaching practices mm -hmm. um, to help the child to not be impaired by their diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, let's, I think, uh, talk a little bit more about um, that second gate of do they need specialized instruction. It's a very specific uh, phrase versus accommodation. So what are the, so that makes me think, what are some of the things that happens? What are some of those services? What does it look like? Mm -hmm. If you are found eligible and it is determined, your team service says, yes, this is interfering, then what happens? So um, if a child does qualify then for specialized instruction and special education, um, the team writes uh, what's called an IEP or individualized education program and it includes um, a description of the child that we just evaluated, mm -hmm. um, what their strengths are, what concerns we have about their development, and then what they need in order to um, make progress towards mm. successful school, home, and community life. And in that IEP, um, the team identifies some goals that they're working on, and then what sort of services the child will need in order mm -hmm. to achieve the goals on the IEP. So the services are a way of delivering that specialized instruction. Mm -hmm. And um, de depending on the child and what their needs are, services could include um, what we call just a general special educator mm -hmm. who um, comes and meets with the child a certain number of times a week, usually in the setting of their preschool or mm -hmm. child care program, um, and helps them um, have access to the same kinds of educational experiences their typically developing peers have, mm -hmm. and to participate in their classroom routines and activities and mm -hmm. curriculum just like their peers do. Mm -hmm. um, Services also might include what we call related service, 
which are speech and language therapies, okay. um, occupational therapy, physical therapy, again, based on the need um, of the child as demonstrated through evaluation. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the things um, sometimes we run into with early intervention is that distinction between related services versus a generalized sort of support for success. You know, I think some people think of special education and, you, you know, you go somewhere and do something. You know, mm -hmm. like you leave the room and do the special reading or, mm -hmm. or you play with some balls because you're working on motor development. Whereas what you just described is um, sort of more embedded in a classroom, accessing the same education and experience that typically developing peers are accessing. I think that's key. I'm not sure people think of special education that way. So No, you know, and it's funny um, when we meet with families to begin the process of talking about an evaluation, um, a family will have their own idea of what special education mm -hmm. was like back when they were in school. Mm -hmm. And we usually talk about how things have changed over the mm. years. Um, in my world, in our school district, we, we work very hard at inclusion, which is um, a method or a, an approach to special education where kids are included with their mm -hmm. typically developing peers, which is, you know, largely in the classroom, and services provided inside the classroom rather than pulling them out to mm -hmm. um, a table or a room somewhere else. Um, now, I should also say that every child's an individual, right. and every child's needs are different, yep. and sometimes um, children do benefit from mm -hmm what we call pre-teaching, mm -hmm. which is teaching a skill that they need to have in order to be successful back in the classroom with their peers. They, because they need specialized instruction, they might need it taught a little differently mm -hmm. or taught with more repetition. And sometimes it's more successful to do that outside the classroom, mm -hmm. but the goal is to bring them back into the classroom mm -hmm. where they can use and demonstrate that skill mm -hmm. um, in the context of um, their peers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting to think about, you know, parents come in with their own ideas of special education, and it made me think of the fact that some parents, that's, uh, it might be a positive or negative or who knows what kind of connotation of, um, and I wonder, you know, you must see that broad range of, you know, what, what is a parent experiencing when this happens? So what are some of the things you think of that come, comes up for parents when they go through this process? Mm -hmm. I think that some parents, for, for some parents, this might be the first time they're thinking that their child is maybe a little different or learns differently mm -hmm. than other children. Um, so we try to, you know, we, we want them to know everything we know about their child and mm -hmm. not to have, you know, hold on to in information or gatekeep any information mm -hmm. in any way. Um, I think a lot of families that I've met with recently have had um, their own experiences with special mm -hmm. education. So they're familiar with an IEP mm -hmm. or somebody in their family had an IEP and went through special ed. Mm -hmm. um, so, but all families are, um, you know, this is their child that you're right. talking about. And whether they have experience with it or not, um, it can be um, a sensitive um, conversation that we have. And I mean, we try very hard to respect um, and be sensitive to mm -hmm. families' needs and um, uh, uh, understanding of the information. Mm -hmm. And I'll have to say that it's kind of complicated, and there's a lot of papers, and there's a lot of um, <laughs> meetings and a process where we have to do things mm -hmm. a certain way in, mm -hmm. in special education. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I feel strongly that our team is, you know, works really hard to respect families' roles and mm -hmm. um, value families' input in that process every mm -hmm. step of the way. Mm -hmm. 
Right, and I think, you know, uh, when we were talking sort of about the zero to three and children embedded in their family and you can't really separate, and then as we get to sort of three to five-year-olds and then school, um, it sort of moves back to the education. And I think it's a process. You know, mm -hmm. young in early childhood, and people define it differently, zero to eight, that children are parts of their family and how important it is to put, every, put it in that context. I mean, you know, you said success at school, home, and community. It's still, it feels to me like you still have that sense of, mm -hmm. um, you know, holding the family, even if it's a little narrower focus on mm -hmm. education, and that, that seems good. But it is a lot of information. I think it's overwhelming, even for uh, parents who um, feel like they know the resources or have had friends. I think it can still be overwhelming. Are there particular resources or places that you that you've gotten feedback from parents is particularly helpful? Like if people have questions about the process, where can where do you suggest people look for good resources? Um, we always uh, we always suggest um, Vermont Family Network, mm -hmm. which um, can be a place where families uh, can get more information about their uh, child's particular disability, um, can talk to other families who've been through this before. Mm -hmm. um, families have rights in special education mm -hmm. also, and we start every meeting with a parent by offering them parental rights, and we give um, a copy of the um, state regulations that mm -hmm. describe parental rights and we also give a condensed copy mm -hmm. that is good <laughs> written in <laughs> more <Language> family <laughs> friendly <Good>. language <laughs> um, with us with a list of resources mm -hmm. um, we encourage families to ask if they are if they have a concern or if they're uh, they have a question we hope that we've created an environment where mm -hmm. they can come back to us mm -hmm. and ask, right. what does right. this mean? Right. Or, um, but sometimes also families need support of other kinds that we don't provide or can't mm -hmm. provide in special education, such as mental health support, mm -hmm. um, family support around um, housing or um, employment and um, we refer to Children's Integrated mm -hmm. Services, mm -hmm. um, Head Start when appropriate, mm -hmm. um, other community um, resources. Which I think is a great um, point to make. You know, none of us can do all of this alone. Mm -hmm. So how important it is to connect with other um, providers and how to collaborate so that family, make it family friendly. So. Um, and we, we, I think ha that happens pretty well in our community, hopefully, from families' perspectives, too, mm -hmm. that um, uh, we're all sort of in this together. So back to that team model right. and that idea. So um, so you're in Wyndham Southeast Supervisor yep. Union. Mm -hmm. You said what towns have, is there somebody like you in every other, like in our general area? <laughs> right. How does it work? Yeah, so uh, Essential Early Education is a program that's our services throughout the state. Mm -hmm. Every supervisory union and school district has um, a person like me mm -hmm. and uh, services like triple E um, and a triple E coordinator. Mm -hmm. So no matter what town you are in, in right. our general area, you could right. call up the supervisory union and say, who's the triple E person? And right. that should help you on yes. your path. Mm -hmm. Great. Good. Um, you know, it, we are almost out of time. I know it's hard to believe we've wow. barely scratched the surface of um, of this topic. So uh, I've said this every time. I think you should come back. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for for joining us, and this has been really informative. Thank you, Chloe.